hello, I'm the Beauty Professor, and you can find my beauty blog at beautyprofessor.com. I hope you guys are doing really well and that your month of February has been moving along nicely. I went back to the classroom teaching for spring semester a full load, as well as maintaining all of my responsibilities in the beauty world. So I'm excited to make this video for you today. The weather the last couple of weeks has been super rainy here in Southern California, and that's not optimal either for shooting product or of course for shooting video in natural light. But I'm grabbing the natural light we have right now. It's supposed to rain later on this afternoon. And I'm going to pack in a bunch of new products as well as products I've been relying upon heavily. I Chiefly, we'll be talking to you guys about the Giorgio Armani Power Fabric High Coverage Foundation Balm, which you have requested I review multiple times over on Instagram and on the blog. So I'm excited to show you this in action. It is on my face right now in shade 6.5. That's the shade that I purchased, and it's working perfectly. So more details on that, as well as products that I'm loving in the skincare eye color, complexion, and of course, lip. And there's been so many new lip launches lately. So I'll be showing you a spectrum of new lip color launches that I'm loving right now. Just a word on Johanna, who has made appearances in many of my previous videos. She's doing so well, healthy and thriving, and such a happy baby. She's currently napping right now, which is a benefit for me to be able to film as well. But I'll try to insert a picture so you can see what she looks like at her new age actually be seven months next week, which is just mind blowing. And Jethro, bless him, is doing well as well. So they're like siblings, it's adorable. My heart explodes every single time I see them together. A quick word also on what I'm wearing. This is a shirt dress that I purchased from Nordstrom. It's by Topshop. So I always size up a little bit in Topshop. I think that the clothing runs a little bit small and I like usually a looser, more fluid fit. And then finally, this is something I've been, I'm featuring on the blog as well. This is my latest fanny pack purchase. It's by MCM. I ordered it off of the Nordstrom site after seeing it in store in a different color, but I really wanted this kind of cognac. I think that's what it's called. It's a tan kind of luggage tone. It's huge, but in the best possible way. I think it's made for a man, but it also is made to carry my stuff. I love a good fanny pack these days, not only stylistically, but also from a pragmatic perspective. It's amazing to have my hands free to do everything I want to do, whether it's, of course, holding Johanna, which is a constant, or swatching makeup when I'm shopping. It's just a perfect answer to all of that. So this is my new fanny pack. I'll have static images on the blog, but I did want to show it to you guys in person on film. All right, onto the products. So you can see I already have makeup on. This is not gonna be a tutorial or an application. I've got too many products to cover. But I'll start with skincare. In terms of skincare, I have some new launches that I've been properly testing this winter, as well as some perennial favorites that I'm using no matter what. I wanna open with the La Prairie Platinum Rare Cellular Life Lotion which is a new launch and I received this a week or so ago. I've been using it ever since. I do love La Prairie's skincare. I know that it's definitely at an investment price point, but the products are incredibly effective for my skin and well worth it in my book. This is a liquid lotion that you can use to heighten the efficacy of any other product you're using. It does have extreme anti-aging properties. It increases cell turnover. Your skin is just bouncier, dewier, fresher, and so far I'm absolutely loving this and I'll weigh back in again next month. For moisturizer, there will be no surprise that I'm still using the Augustinus Botter, the Rich Cream. This is my third bottle and I'm probably down to here on this, so I'll start my fourth soon. But my mom and I still are both incredible devotees to this brand and this formula. It just takes such good care of our skin. And I find that my skin is clearer, fresher, smoother, plumper, and it's pretty effortless, two pumps morning and night. So I appreciate the streamlined nature of the skincare and the fact that it delivers results. Body moisture, <laughs> this is gonna be a surprise for you. This is the Aveeno Baby Daily Moisture Lotion. I had a tube of this for Johanna, and one day I was just like in a rush. I grabbed it from her nursery, put it on my legs before I headed out, and I love it. I ended up purchasing a tube for myself as well. This is the fragrance-free, paraben-free, 
fla flalate, I never know how to say that properly, free formula. So there is none of the bad stuff, but it's still incredibly moisturizing and of course relies upon the colloidal oatmeal to help kind of trap moisture and keep your skin soft. But she uses it, I put it on her, and I put it on me as well. Clearly this is unsponsored, <laughs> none of this video is sponsored. But I do want to say I'm really pleased with this and I like the fact that it's fragrance free, which is just a benefit for me. I'd rather just add fragrance in the form of fragrance than put it on with lotion most of the time. For hair, I am of course using a large rotation of hair care products in my shower. It's like a little cathedral of product in there. Everything from Orbe to Gloss Modern to Sisley to Alterna. And I'm even trying a set of hair care from And Other Stories, which smells amazing and is treating my hair well as well. But I did want to show you one product that I've been relying upon no matter what shampoo or conditioner I'm using. That's the Orbe Gold Lust Nourishing Hair Oil. I've used this for years and this is a little bit smaller size but it's handy for me to grab and certainly to travel with. I can put it on after washing and just kind of run it through my hair. It makes it smooth and silky, adds some additional moisture and control. You can use it as a touch up during the week to kind of tame flyaways if you just use a tiny bit. So if you haven't tried this yet, of course the Gold Lust shampoo and conditioner are staples for me too. But this one is great for all hair types and can work with any of the hair carriers. For eye cream, I am using a lot of the Clay de Po Enhancing Eye Contour Cream Supreme. This is a brand new launch from Clay de Po. I did feature it in a recent Clay de Po Spring Summer 2019 collection blog post, which I'll link to. The color launches for this particular collection are incredible as well. But this eye cream it has been really effective for me to just smooth things out. I hadn't really used a lot of Clay de Po eye cream in the past. So this was a newer endeavor for me. What I really like about it, in addition to the formula, it's lightweight but moisturizing. It soothes my tired eyes overnight when I'm sleeping. I could put it on in the day as well. Also, the cream is all the way up to the top here. I don't know about you, but I hate putting my fingers into things. Of course, as I continue to use it, it's going to depress, but for whatever the reason, it's just really easy to get to. And every single time I reach for it, I just am glad about the level of where the cream is. So that's just like an experience dimension, but the cream itself is fantastic. And it does come with a little roller that you can kind of use to dis dispense and then disperse the product and really make sure you're working it into your skin. For primer slash a glowy layer before foundation, I've been experimenting with two products. First is the Lancer Danny Glowing Skin Perfector, which is lovely. I've used this on and off for years, and certainly I was using Le Metier de Beauté Povierge for a very long time. It's kind of, the brand has kind of phased out, so it's harder to find the Povierge. So I was looking for alternatives, and many of you were asking me for the same thing. So Danny is great. It's not tinted. It's just more of a pearl finish. It does have skincare benefits and some moisture, but it wears beautifully under foundation. You can also wear it alone for a very subtle glow. I'll have swatches of Danny, as well as the NARS Super Radiant Booster side by side, so you can see them on my blog. I'll link to that. This NARS is less of a skincare formula like the Danny is, and more of just kind of a cosmetic option. It's an illuminator and it just comes in one shade as far as I know. And I can wear it the same way I do the Danny. I would just put like a pea sized amount all over my face. That's what I have on today actually. And then follow with foundation. It doesn't create any kind of color per se, but it does add a really pretty luminous glow to the skin that then you can kind of temper with some foundation. The final component of skincare that I wanna show you today is an actual tool in this case, and this is the BLA. It's called the Bella Lip Appliance. I've been experimenting with this since, gosh, Christmas time, and I've been using it regularly. It's designed by somebody in the dentistry industry, but the intent is to help exercise facial muscles so that you can have more firmness, a more contoured jawline, and it also, incidentally, with one of the exercises, plumps your lips up and it really does. You of course get immediate results, but you also get long-term benefits and that's what I've been really curious in, kind of calibrating and using it. So 
more on this as I continue to use it, but I'm loving it. I use it in the morning. You can, it takes like a minute total to go through the exercises and they don't hurt. They're really easy. And then I do the same thing at night. I put it by my bedside. So I love the convenience and ease of using this and I have been noticing results in my face. So I'm going to continue using this and just wanted to show you that, yeah, for two months it's been a part of my routine and will continue to be so. On to foundation. So what I'm wearing today is the Giorgio Armani Power Fabric High Coverage Foundation Balm. I ordered it in the shade 6.5. I was torn between 6 and 6.5, but 6 is typically light for me in Armani faces. So I went with the 6.5, and I'm so glad that I did. This is it without any kind of excess of bronzer or having to rebalance with powder. It's truly like the color that has been applied to my face and it blends nicely with the rest of my complexion. I'm probably at like an NC 25, 26, 27 if that were a thing right now. And of course my skin is light medium with subtle olive undertones as a rule year round. But I am at my lightest since 6.5 works. I probably would bump up to seven. Uh, or maybe even 7.5 in the dead of summer when I'm tan, but for now I can see this working for me for most of the year. So it comes in this kind of bulky, but not in a bad way, compact. You have to have space for the actual product. Nice mirror, haven't even removed the label here yet, um, and a sponge. Now my sponge looks untouched, even though I've been using this because I use a beauty blender to apply. I like to do this with most of my foundations, so beauty blender just gives me the most flawless application, and then of course I like the sponge for on the go should I need to touch up, but I just haven't yet. So that's how I apply it with a dampened beauty blender. The product itself looks like this. It is a balm. It feels really light and quite thin actually for the coverage that it imparts. I'm really impressed with that. I of course do have swatches of this on my blog that I took pictures of, but you can see it's just like a smooth balm texture. It does add some hydration, but it doesn't get oily as the day wears on. I haven't gone into this much depth of the foundation on a video in a while, but I will say that the application is easy and quick. You get good medium to full coverage quickly that doesn't look cakey at all. It looks like skin. Also, it stays in place. I wore this for the first time on campus last week on a rainy day, <laughs> which gives it all sorts of testing, and it performed flawlessly. I didn't need to touch up. I kept checking. I didn't need to, so I'm very pleased. This may edge into being my favorite Giorgio Armani foundation formula to date. I'll continue using it. I hope I have full swatches of all shades for you down the line, but for now, I'm just really impressed. I did couple it with the Armani Power Fabric Concealer, which is also new. I purchased this myself as well. Shade six is what I did for concealer. I like a tiny bit lighter in that department, and I do feel like this is almost the equivalent of the 6.5 in, in the foundation. Go figure. Anyway, doe foot applicator, thin texture, beautiful crease, free wear and it is full coverage in like a tiny little dose of it. So a little goes a long way. I wear it under my eyes. You can also use it to cover a blemish, which I'm pleased with. I don't often feel like under eye concealer also works well for blemishes, but this one happens to do so. So once again, a great launch from Armani Beauty. I'm really pumped about both of these formulas and I hope that what I've shared with you right now with my experiences is offered some insight if you're interested. All well. right, for complexion, specifically bronzer, blush, highlight, I'm grouping all of those products together. I want to show you a few things, not only that are on my face right now, but that I think are just elements I'm excited to discuss with you for winter launches. So one is something I've covered so many times in videos, but it's something I use every single day. So that's the Cogendo Gloss Film Powder, and I wear it in shade 123, which is my match in most Cogendo. So it is a great under eye powder to set concealer or to touch up your under eyes. You can also use it for a light wash as coverage. It's silky, but you don't have a powdery finish. I honestly have never tried a powder that does exactly that. Coverage, mattification, Joey's being vocal, evenness, but an the powdery finish is undetectable on the skin. For bronzer, I, I use so much of, and you've seen this in other videos I've done, 
I love the Charlotte Tilbury Filmstar Bronze and Glow, and this is in the darker version. I find that this bronzer, I can use less of it. It contours and warms up my face, and I mean, I've been using this pr pretty much daily for months, and I haven't even made a dent because a little goes such a long way. The highlighter is more of like a persimmon toned blush for me. It's very luminous, so if I'm gonna put any on, I do it lightly, and it just creates a little bit of color and warmth for the cheeks. Another bronzer that I've been using is the La Bella Donna Vision of Mineral Lights Compact Color Bronze. And this is kind of like multi-purpose powders that you can use to highlight, to contour, to warm up the face. As the four colors play nicely together. I can actually create a pretty full dimension, full face in a few seconds with this, and even use it like on my brow bones, on my eyes if I want. It's just a great multitasking product. I'll have swatches on the block. For blush, I've rediscovered my Charlotte Tilbury ah. Cheek to Cheek blush in Pillow Talk. I purchased this months ago, then of course Pillow Talk sold out immediately, and now it's pretty much back in stock. I did see a bunch of it at Nordstrom recently. And this blush is such a pretty neutral for the skin. I envision it looking great on all skin tones. You can build it up for intensity. I am wearing it on my cheeks right now. And it just gives a subtle flush that looks really natural and pretty. Another blush I'm loving is the Kevin Aquan Neo Blush and grapevine. I feel like I talked about this last year. It is such a unique, pretty purple color. I think purple blushes or violet toned blushes are hard to find and equally hard to kind of execute on the skin. But this one works really well because there's a gradient. So you can kind of adjust intensity and that's what I appreciate about this blush. It is, oh, I put a little bit on the apples of my cheeks for a little pop and I'm really pleased with how it looks every single time I wear it. Quick side note, Joey's up from her nap, and I'm guessing you guys can hear her in the background off and on. She's playing in her playpen off to the side, and I hope you bear with me with the background sound. I'm home alone a lot with her during the week when I'm not teaching, and I love it. It's an amazing experience, but that does mean that I'm doing this all <laughs> on my own. My parents help me so much on the days that I work, and of course my husband is so much a part. You know, it's a team effort on evenings and weekends but during the day if i want to create content i'm doing that kind of in a mitigated way with joey next to me so i hope you understand and that you'll bear with me with any kind of sound interruptions she's just living her little life over there happy as can be on to highlighter the first highlighter that i want to show you is the westman atelier super loaded tinted highlight and that's in peau de peche I've showed you guys this before in videos, but it is something that I still reach for very consistently. And I always tell people who are interested in trying something from the Westman line to start with this. It works for all skin tones. You don't have to worry about color matching yourself. And it's just beautiful. A top foundation for a glow and a little bit of color because it is opaque in that regard. Also, of course, under foundation or under blush to kind of increase intensity. There's just so many ways you can use this product. It's stunning. The other highlighter I've been using and I have on my face as well today is the Flesh Beauty Flesh Pot. It's eye and cheek gloss. I love the versatility. When I met with Linda Wells last month, she was in LA. We were talking about her line and she was telling me this is just like such a labor of love for her. She's so into what this product is all about in terms of its you know editorial appeal but you can still be an everyday person and wear it and i love the fact that you can wear it of course on the eyes for a glow also high points of the face it does not impart really any color it's just more of a sheen it's not sticky and it wears beautifully on the skin so i put some on the high points of my face today and I like that it's versatile and portable. And then, of course, any of my powder products that I apply, I've been using, as always, my Surat Beauty Artistic Cheek Brush. And I have two of these. I've used them for years. You see them in all my videos. I don't know what I would do without them. Troy Surat, his whole line is genius, of course, but he's a genius in the way he created his brush line with so much love and precision and care. These brushes are exquisite. For eyes today, I'm going to be showing you some products that aren't new, but that I've just been using. Definitely worth it. Uh, the Tom Ford Cream and Powder Eye Color in Golden Peach. You've seen this a lot from me, and it's just one of the best 
quick washes of color I've ever experienced. It doesn't crease. You have powder and cream play together so well. You can see I'm almost through this one. I need to get another one. I soon. love the Hourglass Scattered Light Shadows. All the shades are really pretty, so I recommend them all, But and I'll link to my swatches, but I've been using a lot of the foil shade, which is a pure and beautiful gold. You can tap it even over the peach for some extra dimension. It looks like you spent way more time on your eye than you did. And you can also wear it alone as a wash of color just for a golden eye. Finally, another not new but heavily relied upon shadow for me is the Dior Show Mono in 573 Mineral. It's kind of like a soft, silky, velvety, taupey brown. It's a very unusual color in my book. I don't know what exactly to call it, It's but it's a neutral not too warm and you can wear it as a wash of color. When I use this, I usually also follow with a liquid line and it's just a really sophisticated, easy eye. You can smudge a little bit along the lower lash line as well. Swatches of this on the block. And then speaking of liquid line, I am in love with the Suku Liquid Liner in black. I am wearing it right now on my eye and it's just, it's, it's matte, it's so pigmented, it's smooth, it stays in place all day. I actually was watching the Mr. Rogers documentary the end of my day a couple nights ago and I was crying because he just makes me so sentimental. He's a very fond part of my childhood. So I'm sitting there sobbing and my eyeliner was like flawless when I was done. This stuff does not play. It's amazing. And then right now I am wearing the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Top Palette. Once again, I feel excited to show you this now that you can get your hands on it again. And I love it for a warm, neutral wash of color. I used all four shades, and that doesn't happen often in a palette for me. But I start with this one, I follow with this in the crease, I put a little of this to the brow bone, and then I use this just in the center for some extra glow. It's fantastic if you like an easy, neutral eye. For lashes, I have a combination of two products that are new on my eye lashes. One is the Marc Jacobs primer it's the velvet primer and it really builds up volume and length easily i like that it's kind of a flesh tone as well because you can actually see where it's going on your lashes it's not stark white but you can still see it so that you know what to cover and where to go with your mascara to follow and then the sisley so volume mascara i love the sisley intense and the curl so this newest formula really creates depth and volume and that's what I have on. This brush allows you to really get in there, but it's a little thicker than the So Intense brush, so it builds quickly. Just being vocal again. <laughs> and then brows, I've just put on my trusty Tom Ford Fiber Brow Gel and Chestnut. Please don't ever discontinue this Tom Ford. It's too good and too easy for a feathery brow with hold and depth. And then I, this doesn't really fit into any category per se, but it is in this post and video I want to show you. I use the Mason Francis Kirk Dijon Baccarat Rouge 540 every single day. I have bottles, I've got travel sizes. Just, it's my daily fragrance. Finally, for lips, I told you guys I would be talking about a bunch of new lip launches, but also ones that I always have, <laughs> always have in my purse so that you can see what what I'm using. Right now this lip is a combination of the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk, we're sensing a Pillow Talk theme here, Pillow Talk Lip Planet, this is like my third or fourth one of these over the years. Such a good, maybe my favorite lip liner. If I had to just have one, this would be it due to its color, its lasting power, its versatility. Put that on and then I followed with three things, two of which are in my hands. This is the Tom Ford Lip Lacquer Luxe in Darling. This is a matte formula. And of course, swatches of everything on the blog, so I'll link, but this has such a pretty effect. It's, it's a soft, pinky nude, of course, and I find this is more hydrating than any previous matte lip color formula Tom Ford has released. So I think Darling has been in and out of being sold out. I purchased it like sight unseen a couple of weeks ago and still am using it regularly. And there's the Tom Ford vinyl version of the Lip Lacquer Luxe. This is the shiny version rather than matte, and he has released a bunch of shades in both formulas. And this is in the shade Intimate. A little of this goes a long way. It is such a pigmented gloss, like good grief. So pigmented. I put a little bit of a darling and then let that happen. So it's kind of a pinky beige nude with a plenty of color. 
Chantecaille's new lip crystal. I ordered this one shade only of the three. It's, it's called Citrine, and it's a very glowy pink. Amazing color. It's so pretty on its own or just over some liner, but I also put some in the center of my lip for some additional depth. I just feel like this tr this quartet of products makes your lips just look their absolute best. So this is an and, and for every tube purchase, a tree is planted. I'm loving Citrine. I know there's some darker shades as well. I can't speak to those, but this is a beautiful, versatile on its own or over lip color kind of color. Next is the Galactic 3-in-1 Lip Sparkle Balm, which is a super versatile product. It comes in two shades. It's a beautiful, semi-shimmery, moisturizing balm that you can just wear for a kind of liquid light on the lips. You can also, of course, wear it over liner or over existing lip color for more depth and more sparkle. It comes in this pale shade twinkle and then a little bit more purple iridescent shade called periwinkle. Exact swatches on my blog. Next, Clay de Poe has come out with some beautiful new shades in their refined lip luminizer formula, which is new. I wear so much of shade 506 porcelain pink, which is a gorgeous, very just put it on quickly neutral pink with a light creamy hue. Some other new launches I want to show you that I'm still testing, but you know, wearing at the same time. It, one is the By Terry Lip Expert in Matte and Shine formulas. I have a bunch of different shades in like nudes and pinks and peaches. This is Guilty Beige, which is a matte. The mattes are, of course, way more pigmented. Guilty Beige is probably my go-to nude here of all the, sh the options. It's the lightest, believe it or not, and it's still pretty dark of the choices. And then I love shade 10, Bare Flirt, in the shine. The combination of these two together is exquisite. So more swatches of more shades in these formulas on my blog, but here's two favorites. All right, so Joey's energy level is like, plus plus so i felt like to finish up this video with as little distraction as possible i mean it's a whole year right now that being said i'll continue on with the remaining lipsticks i want to show you my collaboration with christian audette still holds a huge and special place in my life i always am wearing some version of johanna yes that's you mixed with go lightly lately johanna of course is the perfect pinky nude and Go Lightly is a soft, creamy, face brightening coral. I think this is a perfect shade for spring coming up if you're looking for a way to switch up your look. I like to mix the two to really get a custom shade and that's part of what I design these lip colors to do, to play well together. Another new matte option comes from MAC. They just launched some new shades in their Powder Kiss formula, which is a beautiful, kind of diffused, full coverage. And I am particularly fond of Stay Curious, which is a gorgeous nude rose. As the last lipstick that I want to show you, finally, is Tom Ford Spiced Honey. I had a mini of this and I picked up a larger version after realizing how easy this is to wear. It's kind of a creamy, peachy, opaque nude. Sensing a theme here based on everything I've shown you thus far, but there's something about it that feels very different. It just brightens up the face. It is very pale, but it's not too pale. And it's unlike anything I currently own. I can't explain its magic. It just kind of is one of those shades you need to try it in order to understand its wonder. Anyway, so this has been in my purse nonstop as well. All right, so not a complaint, but just a confession. Shooting this video, the products, the swatches, has been a three plus hour endeavor on my own over here. Right. In here, I hope you found this video, which is full of beauty products and real life going on. I hope you found it interesting and enlightening and entertaining and that I was able to show you something that maybe you wanted to learn a little bit more about. Of course, as I've heavily referenced in the video, I'll have a companion blog post with swatches and more thoughts and links to everything as well. So please go ahead and visit there as well. I'll link to that post below. Thank you for hanging in there with me in this new phase of my life. I'm feeling so blessed and so grateful for all that's going on here at home and all that I get to do and learn and figure out in this 
in this new chapter, but also so grateful for you guys being so sweet and supportive and thoughtful and loyal. And I hope to continue to make content that captivates you in the coming days. So please also leave along with your questions and comments, any ideas for future videos. As always, don't forget to visit me at Beauty Professor, which can be found at beautyprofessor.com. Take care.